Hello. Hey, welcome to 20 Reasons Diet and Exercise Can Stop Working. I can probably think of maybe 25 that I've experienced. <laughs> I almost made this uh, list 100, oh, yeah. 100 different reasons. But it was, first of all, 20 was a lot. And I didn't want to get into like the minute details of things that like don't really make that big of a difference. So I, I intentionally limited it to 20 to go, this is the stuff that actually probably really will make a difference. And uh, once we get into the list, I go pretty quickly point by point. So, but before we do that, let me just mention, this is a blog that I've written. We're gonna kind of read through it. We normally go into a little bit more detail in these videos, so it's not just a strict read through. But if you'd rather just read it, we can send you the link to that. Uh, but let's kind of jump in and talk about what this is about. So as you get older, losing weight can get more difficult. The things that you used to do to stay in shape, they don't have the same impact as before. If anything, you may just feel more banged up and sore when you exercise. Uh, meanwhile, the foods that you used to be able to eat, they affect you now in ways that they never did before. Weight gain seems to be kind of an inevitable consequence of having your favorite foods or treats. Mm. Even if you are careful about what you eat most of the time, it feels like, okay, I'm still gain weight really easily here. It's almost like diet and exercise don't work for you anymore. So is that really what's happening or is there something else going on? So you will be surprised to find out that the reasons, all of the reasons that I've listed here that diet and exercise stop working, they still come back to diet and exercise in the end. So in other words, the solution is almost never something that's unrelated to either how you eat your diet or how you move, exercise, or both. In fact, a lot of times it is both. Mm. Just as an example, so the first time I started exercising, I, I stuck with it for two to three months. I think it was a three month program. I didn't make it to the end, but I stuck with it for almost three months and I saw basically no change at all to my body, which is super frustrating to say the least. Most mm. people have experienced that. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I didn't abandon my journey altogether, but I did kind of start looking for other, like, alternative answers. Yeah. So, I remember driving to work every day, and I had this, like, little bag, like a little thermos bag. It had a whole bunch of pills, pow powders, so, like a shaker. I've never heard this story before. Yeah, I mean, it's not really a story. It was just like uh, this. I had these pills that were all about that big supplements. They were huge. And I, throughout the whole day, I was taking it. Anyway, I just wanted to see if supplements would help. Hmm. And it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also got really, for a while, I was super into the science of body types. And I thought maybe there was something wrong with my body. Or if not wrong with it, like, oh, there's just something like unique about my body. Something that is different. And I, I got to figure out, maybe that's what it is. I got to figure out what that is and account for that if I want a result. But no, that was not the answer either. I can relate to that. Yeah. Like, well, especially as a woman, the hormones mm -hmm. make you think yeah. that things are wrong. Most people think, ah, oh, there's probably just something with my body. That's, that's very, mm -hmm. very common. No matter what I tried, though, nothing really seemed to move the needle in any significant way until I came to this realization Diet and exercise always work if you're doing it right. Mm. I was just making all kinds of mistakes, and I, but I was completely unaware of it. I didn't realize that they were mistakes. So here again, just real quick before we get into the list, this is kind of where we all go wrong with, with this. Unless you have an actual disease or some kind of condition that requires medical attention, in which case, please consult like a real doctor I'll stop there. The, the problem, unless you have something like that going on, then the problem isn't your age, it's not your hormones, it's not genetics, it's not anything that requires like some kind of sciencey jump start so that you can start getting the effects of diet and exercise. And don't get me wrong, all of those things, they can complicate things and make, make it feel more difficult, make, can make it be more difficult. But there's ultimately something much bigger at play. So, and I get it, no one wants to spend months or years working on diet and exercise only for the end result to be that you look and feel exactly the same as when you started or even worse, which is how a lot of people end up. If you put in the work, you should get the reward. And if that's not happening, if it feels like diet and exercise really aren't getting the job done for you, the real problem is likely a combination of at least a couple things on this list. Yeah, so, I have a client, she's been going to the gym consistently since September. Yeah. She's like not seeing the results for all the effort she's putting in. So she's finally signed up to do nutrition and she's 
she realized like she's got to put that together and i thought that that was like a good example of yeah just feeling like you're doing all the right things and putting in the work and not seeing what it, what it's like yeah. i think it's pretty normal just to be clear she was not working with you going to no, the gym no and now she, she is was working <laughs> out and now we're starting nutrition yeah, yeah okay yeah. yeah okay so let's go through the list i do want to go through it kind of quick because it's a okay. lot of stuff so We'll try to keep it kind of to the point unless you have something you really okay. want to throw in there or me too. Number one, you're eating too much. So for weight loss specifically, this is the only reason that you would not get results. There are a lot of things that can contribute to overeating. And the practical solution is very rarely to just simply eat less, but it's a crucial starting point to understand that if you aren't losing weight, all roads lead back to this. You are eating too much. You may not realize, you may not realize it, you may not know how, but that's what's happening for weight loss specifically. Number two. You don't eat enough. Yes. So this sounds like the opposite of what we just said, but it's not. So if you don't eat either big enough meals that fill you up or you're not eating often enough, you're getting, you know, going few and or many hours in between meals, it's gonna make you more likely to binge or to snack or just to subconsciously overdo it at some other time when you eat another meal. Yeah. So in other words, so, not eating enough. It's like the memes of having salad all week long and then on the weekends you have all the things. Like in the end, you're having more food. So yes, ultimately it's still, the, it's a root of overeating, mm -hmm. but it's a problem within itself when you're not eating enough. Mm -hmm. Number three, you don't eat enough protein. So you may not realize how much protein you should eat, which we've got another blog on that if you're interested. It's not as much as what some people say, but it's probably more than what you're eating. Uh, or you might just not know what good sources of protein are. Just as a hint, it's not peanut butter. It's not any type of nut seed or bean. Those are common mistakes. Regardless of what the actual problem is, is why you're not eating enough protein, what is going to happen is it means you're, going to be, you're, you're not gonna be filling up as much, which is gonna cause you to overeat. Plus the lack of protein means that weight loss will be less healthy of, uh, of a thing. And so you may actually end up looking and feeling worse in the end, even if you do see some results with your weight. Okay, number four. You don't eat enough veggies. <laughs> yes, most weight loss diets emphasize not eating certain mm -hmm. foods, mm -hmm. whatever it is. But it's likely that you're probably not getting enough nutrients to feel your best and reach your goals now as it is. So eating even less food can mean even less nutrients, yes. yeah. which just makes the whole problem worse. So eating more veggies, on the other hand, helps your body function how you want it to, more than you could ever possibly even understand until you've experienced it and started to actually reach your goals. We could say so much more about that one. So okay. much. You know what I almost wrote for this yeah. and then just decided it was kind of dumb, but I'll say it now anyway, is I imagine that it's kind of like the difference between knowing like planes fly fast and being an actual pilot in the cockpit of like an F-15. <laughs> like that's the difference between knowing veggies are good for you and actually experiencing what they mm. can do for you when you start eating mm. more of them. Mm. Anyway, number five. You eat too many highly processed foods. So besides the health risks associated with eating a lot of highly processed foods, it's also a big problem when cutting calories to lose weight. The more processed a food is, follow me on this, the more processed the food is, the less filling it is, mm -hmm. and the more calories it tends to have, which means you have to eat even less of something that's already not filling and then the more likely you are to just hate your life and sabotage, sabotage all your results, even just subconsciously. Mm -hmm. I'll leave it at that. Number six. You don't sleep enough. Mm -hmm. This is maybe the only one that's not directly diet or exercise related, mm -hmm. um, but it's an important one, so I wanted to include it. If you get less than seven hours of sleep, seven to nine is what most people need. It, um, it increases your risk of chronic disease. It makes you eat more calories. It causes you to lose a lot less fat and you'll start to lose more muscle or bone mass. In other words, you're gonna look and feel worse even if you do start to lose weight. If you think that you can get by on less sleep, you're like, oh, I only get five hours sleep and I feel fine. It's actually much more likely, based on all the research, it is much more likely that you've grown accustomed to being sleep deprived and you don't realize how different you could feel and your life could be if you got more sleep. Mm -hmm. 
It has to be high quality sleep though. Yeah. Can't just be interrupted by toddlers. And yeah, well, and that, that gets tough, but that's a whole other subject yeah. that we won't go mm -hmm. to. Number seven, your diet and exercise routines aren't compatible. Mm -hmm. If you only work on diet or only on exercise, you may not get results at all, or it'll be less healthy so that you're, you don't look and feel as good and it'll, the results will be short lived. So you continue to work hard, but the results, they stop coming. Yeah. Like, but yeah, I was talking about earlier. Yep. But if you work on both, put them both together, even if you do that, if they're not designed to work together, in other words, if you're like, I have this workout program, I have this diet, I'm doing both, but they're not actually intentionally meant to mm -hmm. achieve the same things and work together, you still may not get results no matter how much effort you put into it. So it's got to be something that goes hand in hand. For sure. Number eight, your program isn't realistic for your lifestyle. It, so it doesn't matter how perfect a program is on paper or how well it worked for someone else. If it's not realistic for you to be consistent with, it's not going to work. Of course, you have to be realistic uh, about what's actually going to work for you. So like yeah. a working mom who's got three kids who hates exercise <laughs> should not do daily hour long workouts. It's just not going to work. You're not going to stick with it. You won't get results. Now, it will take some kind of small change to get the results you want but it is definitely not necessary to, or effective, to become something that you're not. It's got to be realistic for you. Ooh. you change, number nine. Number nine, you change programs too often. You change it up too much. Yes, even if you consistently work on diet and exercise, even if you did it all the time, if it's constantly a new diet or a new workout program or a new trainer or a new coach or even really just a new strategy in certain ways, the most likely outcome is that you never look or feel any better than you do right now. Actual healthy habits for eating better and being more active aren't things that you do for a couple weeks or even a couple months. It's the same principles that, are, that you have to just apply consistently for the rest of your life. Number 10 is you do the same thing all the time. So even though you do have to work on the same principles forever, like we just mentioned, you can't literally do the exact same workout and have the exact same meals forever and, and expect change. The habits that you're building, they come in steps and there is always going to be another step that you have to take. If you listen to this, cause this is super important. If you don't know how to challenge yourself further or adapt when you hit a plateau, you will be stuck on the same step and you shouldn't expect any results. Mm -hmm. If you haven't taken that next step and don't know what it is, you're going to be there. There's no reason why you should expect something to change. And by the way, this is one of the main ways that we can help you. If you never want to get stuck again with diet and exercise, apply for our coaching, send us a message because we, we put them together we, to work together. To yeah. And results. we guarantee your results. Yeah. Number 11, you don't track enough. Yeah. Not tracking what you eat or how you exercise is a really common and very big mistake. We have a whole blog on what to track if you want to lose weight. So let us know if you want to see that. Uh, I will tell you it doesn't require counting calories or weighing your food or fancy device. Yeah. But the things that you do track, whatever they end up being, you do need to keep up with it even when you don't want to. That's mm -hmm. the important part of tracking. So like when you overeat on the weekends, you can't go, oh, I, I know I ate too much. I'm not even going to pay attention to what it is. If you do that, you're not tracking that. You run the risk of sabotaging, sabotaging your results and you won't really be able to look back and know how or why exactly. You have to be able to have that data and go, this is how much I ate. I know I overate. That's okay. I'm going to figure out how to fix this and do better next time. But you got to track it. Mm -hmm. Number 12, you don't do strength training. Any exercise is a good exercise, but it's not all effective for the specific reasons that you may want. Strength exercise is what you should prioritize because it can check a lot of boxes in a short workout just a couple times a week. The mistake is to only do something that's more of a one trick pony. So for example, jogging or really any type of cardio, which tends to be very popular, that's very good for you. It's great, but it can, it can become counterproductive, which will get you hurt or can cause you to lose healthy muscle tissue if you do it without strength training. So that's something that you need to include if you actually want to get the results you're going for. 
Uh, number 13 is related to that. Okay. You don't lift heavy enough. Yes, and by heavy, I don't mean you have to lift hundreds of pounds. It's relative. That's fun, though. You, <laughs> it, it can be, for sure. You just need to lift however much weight is actually challenging enough to stimulate change in your body, mm -hmm. unless you don't want to change. Yeah. So, for example, you can do 10 squats and stop there if you feel like you could only do 12. Like you go, oh, this is hard, I'm gonna stop, I can maybe do a couple more. But if you stop at 10 squats and you could have done 20, then you need to use more weight next time because that's not going to be challenging enough to stimulate change in your body. And it won't make you big and bulky either. We've got another blog on that. Yeah. 14, you push yourself too hard in every workout. Ladies. <laughs> And guys too, okay, it's okay. common. It's a very common mistake <laughs> thinking that the tougher the workout, the more effective the sweatier it is. The and more sore you are is the more your body is breaking down and yeah. feeling worse and worse. Well, yeah, I was gonna say, not only is it not true, it, so it can be the opposite where it, it, you actually get worse results from it. So your body needs to recover from exercise to get results. That's how you're gonna look and feel better. Especially the older we get. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, it takes a little bit more time to recover with age. Not a lot, but enough where you need to- Needs to be a part of it. Yep. So if you always take your bodies to the limits in your workouts, it may only be able to recover to baseline. So if you start here, when you work out, your body actually gets beat up a little bit. If you beat it up a lot, it may only be able to recover back to here, or it might actually not be able to recover fully at all. And then the next time you work out, it's a little less, a little less, a little less. And eventually you're gonna feel and look worse from, from the whole thing. Hmm. Number 15. You choose the wrong lifts. I don't know anything about this one. <laughs> so yeah, she, she just lets me pick all of her lifts for her. So both men and women, they, what they tend to do is they hyper-focus on specific body parts like chest for guys or the booty for girls or pretty much everyone wants to work their abs. Abductor machine. Or, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that leads to really inefficient workouts. So if your life isn't centered around exercise, if you have kids, you're busy, you just want a normal life. Yeah, you need to spend your limited exercise time focusing on the best bang for your buck exercises that hit as much of your body as possible and is not just focusing on those specific mm -hmm. areas. 16. Okay, your weekends throw everything off track. You, your routine, your schedule is different Friday through Sunday and just changes how you eat, how you move, and it's what, there's like science behind it. Are you going to talk about it? No, I'm not going that much into detail <laughs> with it. But if you have two or three days out of the week that are that much different than the rest of the week, it's going to change the results you're getting. For sure. Now, it's not impossible to have extra freedom on the weekends and still lose weight. But it, but you need to be intentional about it. Yep, and it's very easy to sabotage four days of even the most strict routine with three days of completely yeah. unbridled indulgence. Yeah. So the key is to find balance that gives you the freedom that you want and are looking for in your life so you can live your life the way you want while still helping you reach your goals. Um, three more. Okay, 17, you aren't active enough. Even if you work out regularly, if that's the only thing that you do to stay active, you're gonna have a much more difficult time reaching your goals. Yep. Being inactive most of the day will make you disproportionately hungry while forcing you to eat less at the same time. In other words, even if you eat pretty well, weight loss is either going to be impossible or you're gonna feel awful while you do it mm. just because you're not active enough. Mm. 18. This is a good one. I didn't even think about this. Your kitchen is set up for failure. The foods you have on hand, the things you have accessible, or even just like the tools you have on hand can really make or break what you're grabbing to eat. Yeah, think about what's in your fridge, pantry, cupboards, all of that. If it doesn't have the nutrients that you need to feel better and have more energy, it's gonna be really hard to consistently make good choices. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that you need some complicated like meal planning system though. You can make slightly better choice, uh, decisions on a lot of those items without taking any extra time at all, especially if you have simple strategies for eating more balanced meals, like so you don't have to count calories, weigh foods. If you got simple stuff to make it easy, we can teach you that. Yep. So send us a message. You can apply for our coach and let's talk about that. Two more. Number 19, you take advice from the wrong people. Whether, mm -hmm. and I'm going to give a specific 
example with this, but whether it's you've got well-meaning friends on Facebook, I see this all the time, <laughs> friends saying, oh, you should do this because I did it, or it's some super fit athlete or a celebrity or a model or they got something <laughs> out there, or it can even be young personal trainers and coaches who they love diet and exercise, but they don't have kids or they don't have a whole lot of adulting experience. Any specific plan that these people tell you to follow, that anyone tells you to follow, if, and I mean specific, I'm not talking about just advice, generic advice like we're giving, but if they say do this program or follow this, this is what this you is need. This is one way to do this it. This is the one thing, yeah. Red if And here's how you can know whether you should follow the advice or not. If they haven't spent time asking you questions about your exercise history, your injury history, your food preferences, your lifestyle, your specific goals, or the things that you struggle with to reach those goals. If they haven't had a conversation with you about those things, even if it's a good plan that they tell you to follow, it most likely is not going to be good for you. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna work. Yeah. Last one, number 20. You're doing it on your own. And I don't know what we have right here, but even we use each other to help us reach our goals. Each other, and I hire other coaches at times and follow their programs. It just, yeah, you get diet. So, and this is the thing diet and exercise always work, but you have to know what you're doing, or it definitely will for everybody. It will get to a point where the specific things that did work for you, they just don't work anymore. And the only way to know what you're doing, um, and, and, and like know, okay, this is this is gonna work is by just trying and failing for years. If you're doing it by yourself, and then you just try and fail and hope that okay, eventually, hopefully, I'm gonna get this right and it's gonna work. Or you just get help from someone like us who we, we will guarantee your results, or someone else who can guarantee your. Make sure they can guarantee it because they listen, should be able to listen to your lifestyle and exercise history and your goals. So, yep. Yep. So even if you feel like, okay, diet and exercise don't work for you anymore, it will, and we guarantee it. You just gotta talk to us and let us know and we'll, we'll help you out. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna leave it at that because it's been longer than normal. Yeah. We'll let you go. If you have questions, get in touch with us. Otherwise, we'll see you next time.